Now, I guess the final question before we uh, kind of pivot to a new world in and of itself, which is getting massive updates. And personally speaking, absolutely love that game. Um, when it comes down to it, WoW Dragonflight, massive success. Um, Final Fantasy players, how how do you think that that relationship uh, is strengthened or, or strained? Do you see uh, 14, uh, you know, kind of struggling uh, due to, you know, the critique that some WoW players have, have had of the game? Like, how do you feel overall? What, what happens next with that? Because there's been this kind of, you know, I'm part of it. You know, I'm part of the guilt of like, <laughs> look at us over here, Final Fantasy crushing it. Uh, wow, you suck, you know, like that's, that's my old school, you know, mindset, you know, that I, that I'm partly shamed of and partly embrace. The barrier to entry to an MMO is mostly time. Um, I understand if you're living paycheck to paycheck, $15 a month hurts. I, I've been there plenty of times. I, I've been there more often than I, I want to be. I, I, there's a chance I get there again one day. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope I'm doing things in a way that I don't, but that's, that's just something that happens. Um, but, but compared to like a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox where it's, you know, here in the Midwest, that's that's a big chunk of money until relatively recently in Dallas, that would have been a month's rent. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you see a Sony or an Xbox fanboy, they tend to be locked into that. Like, I only like PlayStation. Have you ever played an Xbox? No, but I knew a guy that had one once. And like, it tends to just be this underinformed, like just anger. And it tends to just fuel this tribalism. Uh, and and I'm sorry for anybody who was born with a birth certificate that says the name Andy, but these 14 <laughs> Andys and wow Poor Andys parents. Um, are, uh, well, I, I assume that their parents had to know. 20 years from now, people are gonna dislike you. Uh, and so <laughs> all these Andys, like I will say at this point, a lot of them have either been ignored, you know, you've, you've seen publicly, you've seen like Asmongold go click and be like, this guy didn't even play this game. Uh, and so they've, they've largely been drowned out and a lot of people have given it an honest shot. And I've had friends um, from either side go give the other one a shot and say it's not for them. I know uh, like Sync, I think Sync Weaver made a really public display of going and trying WoW saying, hey, everybody hates this game. I just want to know what they hate it for. So I went and downloaded it and gave it a shot. And uh, I have some friends that are, you know, I've I've been friends with in the WoW community. And they're like, man, everybody's going over to 14. I'm going to give it a shot. And then they didn't stick with it. And they said, hey, here's kind of my criticisms. And a lot of them were valid. A lot of them were, that's a good reason not to play 14. Uh, and that's not going to change about 14. So I think 14 is just not a good fit for you. And that's okay. Yeah. Um, but there's been a lot of respect there. And it's also exposed just how many of the community has played or is currently playing or plans to play both within the next 12 months. Um, that... And so I think there's been a lot less vitriol there. Um, that's been better across the board, uh, in my opinion. Uh, so I, I think that's that's a lot better. Um, a new MMO should beat current patch content. So let's say 6.3 and Dragonflight launch within 60 days of each other, because that's absolutely that's, possible. That's happening, right? Dragonflight, happening. when does Dragonflight launch? Uh, I believe end of November. Oh. I think 6.3 will slide into beginning of next year if I had to guess, yeah. but they are going to be within 60 days of each other. Yeah, yeah. So let's say those launch. I, I doubt they would put it same week. I bet 6.6.3 6 doesn't have an announced date, so I bet they could they could just be like, oh yeah, and we moved it. Um, if you want to know if there's a last minute move, if they do a Moogle Tombstone for 6.3, Moogle Tombstones are supposed to be based on the history. They've historically been most often 29 days out from the patch, and when they're not 29 days out from the patch, um, for example, one of them they were like 43 days. 43 is 29 plus 14 and they announced a 14 day delay so like if if it's more than if it's more than 29 days and we have a moogle tombstone event that's not tied to like an expansion release um they kick that patch out okay whether they say it or not <laughs> uh and so but it, imagine those compete in theory dragonflight should destroy 6.3 especially because 6.3 is going to split itself across 6.3 and 6.35 so 6.3 is not going to have an update to the Relic. It's not going to likely have Deep Dungeon. That'll be in the half patch. Yeah. So when you're talking about Alliance Raid, MSQ, stuff like that, that should be dominated by five new zones, 10 new levels, a whole new raid with 13 bosses. It should destroy that. And that is not an insult to 14. Um, and so I, I think we are slowly getting better as a community where the general majority of us are going to look at that and say, if you want to dip out at, for portion of your time and or miss 6.3 entirely um because you know maybe it doesn't end up dropping the ultimate i don't know um then and go do wow for three or four months that makes a lot of sense and if you come back for 6.4 that doesn't mean that doesn't necessarily on its own mean that wow had to fail maybe you were planning on coming back regardless no matter yeah. what wow did um 
So I do think we're going to see that mass exodus. Uh, it is going to get dramatized in the algorithm. Um, but like, I don't think there's anything unhealthy about playing both games or you play or just playing more than one game. It doesn't have to be these two games. You play New World mm -hmm. and Final Fantasy. Yeah. And on that note, like when, especially as we uh, pivot into the conversation in New World, um, I've been having an absolute blast with the Summer Medley Fair. Uh, they've been adding in a lot of content and they just this last week shown off uh, what is coming next with both the new zone Brimstone Sands, which from a theming perspective is Egyptian and Roman uh, themed. It's apparently it was settled by the Egyptians sometime in the past. There was a war. Uh, Rome has also, uh, you know, kind of found this area and has since settled it. So you have a kind of a very, uh, you know, very Colosseum esque and pyramid esque kind of joining of these two uh, kind of mythical, you know, in this mythical world. Uh, together so from just an aesthetic like i'm really excited to see this new zone but to catch chris up to speed because he hasn't been following the game so i thought it'd be kind of fun to update him get his real reaction raw reaction and thoughts on this for you guys 